Welcome to Web3 and Me presented by Flolio. In this video, I'll be joined by NFT artist and former professional baseball player, Matt Caesar. We're going to discuss his time as a pro athlete, as an artist, all the great work he's doing with Be The Match to help with bone marrow transplants. Before we get into that, please go ahead and like today's video, subscribe to our channel, and head to flolio.com, F-L-O-L-I-O.com for all of your NFT needs. Nothing in this video is financial advice. We're going to be talking about art. We're going to be talking about life. It's going to be a great episode. Please watch the whole thing. Can't wait to talk to Matt. So a quick background. Matt is a creator of both NFT and physical art. He was a two-sport athlete at Villanova University playing baseball and football, the latter of which he helped Villanova win their first FCS national championship and won the MVP of that game in the process. Pretty great. He went on to be drafted by the Chicago Cubs. He's played for the Padres, Diamondbacks, Phillies, Cardinals, retired from professional baseball late last year. And a very interesting thing I learned about Matt is he's a big advocate and supporter for the National Bone Marrow Registry. So we're going to talk about that as well. So without further ado, that's enough about me talking. Here is Matt. Matt, thank you so much for joining the show today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So let's jump right into it, man. You know, art, being an athlete, you know, which came first? Were you an artist first and then you got into sports or growing up, did you play sports and get into art? Uh, I would probably say it was very, uh, very even. Um, I've been doing art at a young age. Uh, I kind of was always next to my dad. My dad did a lot of art, sketching, drawing, painting. Uh, we fished a lot. So uh, he made bucktails. You know, he sold bucktails online. He's very creative. So I was always kind of by his side when he was doing that. And, and obviously, you know, sports started, at, you know, six, seven, eight years old. So was, for as long as I can remember, it was, uh, it was very even. Awesome. And when did you first kind of create your own style of art? Because, you know, if you look at your super rare page, which we'll pull up in a little bit, it is it's a distinct style. It's very bold, uh, you know, vibrant colors. When did that style begin to develop? Yeah. So, I mean, if you want me to do you want me to go into like my art background? Because yeah, let's do that. Process, yeah. I mean, so I did like, you know, grade school, high school, college, always did art. Um and then, you, you know, you mentioned the Be The Match and the Bone Marrow Foundation. My wife and I started a foundation to support, you know, people with cancer, families with cancer, uh, as well as, you know, donating food and, you know, gifts during the holidays. Um, so we, in 2015, we had a foundation event. And at the event, you know, we did, you know, your normal, your normal stuff, like, you know, sign bats, sign cleats, uh, pictures, um, vacations, you know, up for auction. And one of the things I wanted to do was, you know, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more unique. So I painted a self portrait of myself as a football player and as a baseball player. And each of those sold for, I think it was like $500 each, you know, it was a good amount of money, but you know, n nothing too crazy. So really didn't think anything of it, you know, kept doing it as, you know, a hobby and a way to, to kind of get away from the game because it was very therapeutic for me. And that year we won the World Series in 16. So the Cubs had reached out and they were like, hey, listen, Matt, we loved your paintings. We saw it on social media. Um, would you be interested in doing a painting for our Bricks and Ivy Ball, which is like their, their big charity ball uh, at the beginning of every season? And I was at spring training, didn't have anything. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I, I would love to. So I did it. And back then I would, you know, hand design and cut stencils and spray paint the stencils. And that's just a, um, you know, kind of a, a technique that I developed over time because I wanted to create something that looked realistic, but unique enough that you knew it wasn't like, you know, hand painted, super realistic. And it was different. You know, I knew I, I needed to stand out and that was one way I, I could stand out. So I did the painting of the World Series and at the event it sold for 40 grand and I was like, okay, I know this is a charity event, but $40,000 is a lot of money. So <laughs> yeah. after that, I was like, all right, I got to kind of, you know, put a little bit more effort into this, not necessarily just doing it as, you know, a therapeutic release or a way to get away from the game after the games, you know, like, um, you know, what I would do is after every game, I would just kind of draw for a half hour, 45 minutes just to kind of decompress and, you know, wash away whatever happened, whether it was good or bad. So after that 40K sale, I was like, all right, let's let's start making moves on this and kind of create a business model. So that's what I did, man. I, I started painting. I did, you know, a lot of physical stuff. Uh, I did prints. 
And then in 2020, we had the COVID. I was with the Phillies, um, got released by the Phillies, had a couple of uh, surgeries, um, tore my oblique, tore my groin. So for me, it was like, uh, am I going to go back and play baseball or do I continue grinding this, you know, grinding this like side hustle out and, you know, what can come from it? So Micah Johnson, I'm sure you know the name, um, huge star in the NFT industry, uh, reached out to me. This was early, like I said, 2020. And Nifty Gateway only had like four or five drops. He's like, yo, Matt, uh, are you interested in doing a collab with me? It's of, let's do something of G George Floyd, you know, a white and black baseball player come together to paint, you know, what happened. So I was like, you know, I'd love to do that. Where are we doing it? What are we doing it? Or what like platform are we doing it for? Because I had no idea what anything was. And he's like, we're going to sell NFTs on Nifty Gateway, but we're going to do a physical as well. And I was like, dude, I don't know what NFTs are. I don't know what Ethereum is. Uh, I've heard of Bitcoin, but had no idea what it was. So we did the physical. Um, I painted one side, Micah painted the other side. It came out great, sold for 10 grand. And then we did the NFTs, which, you know, if you think about it, we just uploaded the picture and it was just, you know, on the blockchain on Nifty Gateway. It was, like I said, it was their sixth drop. And I didn't even know when the drop was. Micah texted me and was like, hey, we just sold out. And I was like, sold out of what? He's like, we sold out on NFTs. And he's like, we sold out in six minutes. And I was like, that's pretty sick. And I looked at my wife and I'm like, hey, we just sold our NFTs out. And she said the same thing. She's like, what's an NFT? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. <laughs> so after that, you know, I, I, I enjoy, so all my stencils, I always kind of pre-do them on uh, like Procreate or, you know, Adobe Fresco or, or whatever. So I can, I can outline and see what the stencil is going to look like. So that's, you know, I, I've been doing digital art essentially for, you know, since 2015 or 16. So it was a very easy transition to go from physical to, to digital. Um, and then kind of over the course of, you know, we're in 2022 now, over the course of two years, I had a, you know, huge, a huge influence to me was like X copy and FIWO and, um, you know, Cody, all, all the original, original like top artists that have been around. So I just kind of like altered my style and, um, you know, I, I did what was, I guess, a way for me to like share emotion, you know, it's, it's super easy to do that digitally. You know, you, you can literally, you know, copy paste or, you know, trace over something or just create whatever you want to create. And if you don't like it, you erase it really quick. You know, it's not like spray paint on a scan on a canvas and now you're out of canvas because you don't like what you did, you know? So I, I feel like now my style is, you know, I, I put a couple stencil pieces out because, you know, I've been doing that for you know eight, nine years and I saw Grant Young's success and I thought his, you know, his pieces are very similar to mine. And thank you. And, um, you know, so I wanted to see how that would work out. And, you know, I had the first sale of 2.69, which was cool. You know, I loved it. And then you know, my, my other uh, paintings, I always paint the skeleton and the skeleton is the reference to the be the match. So, you know, we have these conversations with, you know, you or someone else. Um, I can always say, Hey, you know, here's a little background on who I am and who you'd be collecting from. This is why I paint the skeleton. And this is why it's so like near and dear to my heart, you know, and, and people are like, well, well, you know, okay, share with me what you have. And they see it. And now, now that resonates with them. Like, wow, this guy's painting a skeleton because he donated bone marrow to save somebody's life. So, so people can see that emotion behind it. And, you know, that's, that's kind of where I am now, man. I, I love NFTs have changed my life. I told this to many people. Um, I love the creativity behind it and I, and I just love creating, you know, it's, I can do it in my house, um, with my family, you know, with my son, both my parents have cancer. So it was just a very easy decision to kind of like retire from baseball and go full time in NFTs because I just love doing it. That's awesome. Uh, you're actually the second baseball player I've interviewed and he, do you know who Tommy Wilson is? Oh, of course I do. He's, he helped me get involved. So he actually animated our our George George Floyd piece for Nifty Gateway. Okay, yeah, because I interviewed him a few weeks ago, and he mentioned that you know Micah Johnson got him to N into the NFTs as well. So I feel like I'm gonna have to get Mike on the show at some point just yeah, to uh, yeah. just to pick his brain because that's pretty cool uh, to see all this happen. You know, and I, I was wondering like, okay, what's with baseball players and and art? Because I haven't really seen you know any NFL players get into it, 
uh, is it like the downtime that like decompression that you know is really really good for you so that's, that's really cool that mike has gotten so many more people involved and as i look at your work you know the skeleton was definitely a recurring theme the skull is uh mm -hmm. is very very cool and i can you can totally see the x copy inspiration but sure. you also obviously made it your own like it's not mm -hmm. like you just ripped off x copy or anything like you right. have you know some of the coloring some of the you know the effects to it are inspired but i do love the uh the stencil piece that and i'm happy that you saw that the to see that sold but that's a very cool one as well so and i've seen in your shop you have work for kids and everything like that was that a recent you know addition to your portfolio or has that been going around for a while so, so i feel like so what i was just starting to do that before mike had reached out to me about nfts because i was like all right you know what what do i need to do to make a living on art and the easiest thing is to sell prints so i started working on those prints and mike reached out and then i was like all right you know nfts are life-changing for so many people if i can put you know 10 percent of myself in nfts as i put into like baseball or football then i then i know i could be successful and you know that's it's all about networking man i i really think you know nft new york has has been you know a, such a, a blessing for me to go and meet collectors you know and it's just it's it's just been really fun you know I'm, I'm meeting so many so many new people that that helped me not only have success in art but you know these these people are, are all smart you know all all these collectors and all these artists are smart because they're on the blockchain and it's it's difficult to learn how to do you know it, now it's easier but you know in the beginning man it was tough like I've, I almost quit a couple of times because I couldn't figure out how to make a MetaMask wallet in 2019 or 2020, you know? And I was like, golly, man, what do I need to do? And I'm like following these YouTube steps and there was really nothing on YouTube. So, uh, Zach from super rare, like helped me out. Like, I mean, it, it was a process for me to get on there. I'm not very tech savvy, but yeah, dude, it's, I'm glad I stuck it out because like I said, it's been life changing for me. It's very cool. You know, I, I got into NFTs in January of 2021 through like NBA Top Shot. And oh, yeah. my background, actually, I own a gym. Uh, so my background has been as a personal trainer for over a decade. But I've found that like this has been such a cool, you know, cool new realm for me to be a part of. So I love it. Uh, you know, let's talk about Be The Match a little bit because we have you have this open edition that is going live on Friday. And I, I was very very enthralled by the e60 piece that they did about you and anastasia with the uh, bone marrow donation so talk to me about that like how did you get in you know what made you decide to enter the registry you know how has that impacted your life and you know tell us a little bit about be the match and what you're trying to do there yeah i mean so uh i joined my freshman year in college uh coach tally who was the head coach at villanova head football coach at villanova at the time um, had something called, he had, he had recently, I wouldn't say recently, he's been probably doing it for 15 years, my freshman year. Now he's like, you know, close to 80 years old and it's, he's like 30 years, you know, going on of getting the game and, and kind of pushing people to join the registry. But, you know, what we did was we would hold, uh, these bone marrow, uh, kind of donations and we would gather as many people as possible from the school and say, Hey, listen, uh, come here, join the bone marrow registry do a couple cheek swabs and you have the ability to save someone's life. So it was, it was really easy to get people involved um, just because they, you know, they were young kids, healthy kids, and they wanted to help. Um, so after we did the testing, um, you know, all of us as freshmen, we tested or we did the cheek swabs as well. And then, you know, at the time it was one in 80,000, you know, the chances of me being a match. So none of us were like, thought anything of it. We're like, you know, all right, well, we'll just do these cheek swabs and just go about our business and keep being college football players. And then my junior year, I got called to donate and, you know, like you read off, I was the MVP of the game. I was all American that year. So I had a, you know, a really good season and I was an important piece for the team. And, uh, great, right, right before the playoffs, I got called to donate. And I remember walking into, uh, coach Tally's office and I said, Hey, you're probably not going to want to hear this, but I just got called to donate bone marrow and I'm going to do it. And he just like, give me one of these. And he's like, Matt, he's like, I know you're going to do it. And that's just the type of guy you are. He's like, you know, we're, we'll figure something out, but we'd love to have you here in, in spirit. And, you know, we're going to keep going. So I was like, all right. And um, 
it just so happened, like the little girl, Anastasia, I didn't know her name at the time, but she couldn't accept my bone marrow. She was just too weak and, and it got pushed, pushed off. So we went on to win the national championship. I was MVP of the game and it kind of is like all in history, which is, is pretty sick. Um, but then I got called later in the year. I think it was, um, it was sometime in May is when I got called to donate and it was right during baseball season. Obviously junior year of baseball is like your most important year, um, to get drafted. I missed eight to 12 weeks. It was, it was pretty brutal. Um, but had a hell of a season. Uh, my first or my last at bat before I donated, this is a pretty cool story that not too many people know. My last at bat before I donated, I hit a home run. And I look, I remember it like it was yesterday is, is it's incredible. And then my, then I donated my first at bat back. I hit a home run too. So I, I sandwiched, uh, the, the bone marrow donation with a home run. Like, you know, I, I hit five home runs that year. Like that there's, there's gotta be like, you know, uh, a higher power up there telling me like, Hey, man, you're doing the right thing. You know? So it was, it was pretty incredible. And the donation, I, like, I, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday about it. So what happens is, um, they give you a drug called Nupagen and it enlarges your spleen. So that's kind of why you're out for, you know, the weeks you're out. It was, it was three to four weeks, not eight to 12. I don't know why I said that. So I was out three to four weeks because my, uh, spleen was enlarged because of the medicine. And then I donated and, um, yeah, it was, was fine. I, I did a stem cell donation where they, they put a needle in one arm and a needle in the other arm and they take your blood out. They put your blood through a machine and it takes the white blood cells out. And then they feel through the blood right back in your other arm. So it was a um, pretty easy uh, routine. That's why I always encourage people to join. Um, you know, you, I sat there for probably four hours and was able to save someone's life. You know, so it was, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's the entire story, man. And, and being able to like talk to her, like you said, you saw the E60. Um, I mean, that's at the time, yes, it was life changing because I saw the effect I had on the little girl obviously save her life and the family, you know, like they, they, their, their doctors pretty much told the family to have another child because they had no chance, you know, and now being a father of a, you know, a three-year-old, it's like, I would do anything to find a match for myself. You know, I would tear down the world or go conquer it and find a way to keep him going, you know, and for the, for the doctors to say, Hey, you got no chance. It's like, I, I couldn't even imagine, you know, so yeah. that's, that's why I, that's why I started painting the skeleton, man. You know, I, I got away from the stencils because I wanted to find a way to kind of like raise awareness and tell a story because of the kind of the FIWO inspiration, you know, they went and told their story and they, they had such a great feedback from that. And I was like, you know, my, I have a really great story. Um, I saved someone's life and now let's save someone's life through art. And that's, that's why I'm here, man. That's awesome. You know, I have a, I have a seven month old son and I, I, I totally, I can hundred percent relate. Like it would take an act of God to stop me from trying to do whatever I needed to. So do you still keep in touch with them? Are they doing okay? I know that they're from Ukraine, everything going on over there. Like, are they doing all right? Yes. Yeah, so they're in, um, the father is, is that, is that out there fighting the war, which is like, it's terrible. Um, yeah. but, uh, the mom and Anastasia, and they have a little son too. They're in Israel as refugees and they're trying to make their way to Canada to, to be here for good, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's tough, man. It was, it was, uh, you know, I kept in contact with them throughout all of that. And it's really hard to find the right thing to say, you know? So I would just kind of like ping them and say, Hey, you know, uh, I'm just thinking about you guys. Uh, just so you know, someone's like thinking about you, you know, like, I wish I could do something for them, but I can't, you know, and it's, and it's, yeah. it's super unfortunate, but, you know, hopefully they get to Canada and, and possibly maybe one day I can meet them. That'd be, that'd be incredible. So tell me a little bit more about what be the match is doing, you know, to, to try to help spread the word about this and help people. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're in contact with like over 30 million people. Uh, I mean, they, they do a really great job of, kind of spreading the word and they're really looking to get NFTs and try and trying to raise awareness through that too. And, and it was, it was a kind of a no brainer to, to partner up with them. Um, I had someone reach out to me and, 
and they said, hey, you know, I got somebody from Be The Match. Uh, would you be interested in talking to them and working together on NFT? And it's just like, it was perfect because my whole mission is based around like saving lives. So when they approached me, I was like, listen, let's, let's get this done. I said, whether, you know, we partner up or not, I'm raising awareness. I've been raising awareness for the past, you know, since 2010, you know, past 12 years. Um, but yeah, they do a heck of a job. They're literally all over the place. It's super simple. Now you to you have to go and do like, uh, like these things at like a bone marrow testing site. Now you can just go online, you know, I don't know how you link this, but if you just, you know, link be the match.com or you can even do uh, my website, seize the day.com. There's a join button right at the top. Same thing with be the match. And it's super simple. Like I said, it's, it's cheek swab two up here, two up, two down there. And you just send the kit back in. And by that, I think, I think what the lady said yesterday, it's like one in 4,000 now, like white, oh, call, wow. yeah, white Caucasian. And then, you know, black African-American, those numbers are skewed Asian, um, you know, different ethnicities. And that's, and that's the, the, the reason why we're raising awareness because we need, you know, we need everybody to test because, you know, that's, that's how we're going to save lives. Absolutely. So what I'd like to do next, I want to go into super rare. I want to pull up some of your work. I know that you have a piece that, uh, you know, most of your work is sold. A few of them are listed, but I want to pull up inflation nation and uh, take a look at that one. And you kind of give me the inspiration for that one. It's obviously very timely. Uh, I don't think that was an accident by any means, but if we go to your, uh, your super rare page, you know, this is a, like I said, you can obviously see the X copy inspiration here. Uh, talk us through this a little bit more, you know, when you were creating this, like, what was your thought process? Give me the, the breakdown. Yeah. I mean, definitely because of the times and, you know, X copy is not just an inspiration on, you know, style, but I mean, if you look at all his pieces, they all tell stories. I feel like he's the modern day Banksy. So I feel like I tried to beat him to this before he posted something like that, because I'm sure, you know, he thought about it. He had to, man, he's. He's clever and smart, um, but just just to depict it, I just I have the skeleton who we, you know we talked about just blowing up the dollar sign, inflating the dollar sign, and that was you know it's it's pretty easy to see, and you know I wanted to make something simple, uh, simple title, simple description, and you know that's just wanted to to do something very relatable to the times, or relevant is the better word. Yeah, absolutely. If we go to your super rare collection and we see what gets brought up here. What is, what's another piece that, you know, is really special to you and you'd like to discuss? Uh, I mean, you can either do the, this, I mean, anyone, dude, I can talk to the, the pour my heart out and the pour my heart in the art. It was right when I, it was right before I just, I knew that I was going to retire. But it was right before I decided or I came out publicly that I was retiring. And, you know, that's pretty self explanatory. You know, I was obviously going full, full bore on art. And, um, yeah, I think that's, that this is one of my favorite ones, man. This is like, it's cool to see like how the progression went in my art. You know, somebody sent me uh, my first nifty drop and, and it was just, it's just cool to see, you know, the, the progression. And that's, that's what I love about uh, like blockchain and NFTs is that they're not going anywhere, you know, whereas, you know, I could do a physical painting and never see it again. Yeah. You know, and you can, you can look back and, you know, see it all dated and when it was minted onto the blockchain and be like, oh yeah, this was, this was this point in my life that was going on. Uh, if we go back in here a little bit more and we can go further back into it, uh, you know, we have the, the heart of the line one is very cool. Uh, the curtain call, very cool. Thank you. But, you know, I, a lot of these, there, there's the skull in, in all of them. Uh, the save image as I also like. What yeah. was, you know, what what brought this one on? Was this, I know uh, X copy had his like right click save as guy. Is this, you know, kind of your slight version on that as well? Or did this come out before he put that piece up? Uh, no, it was probably after, but I, I put this out because dude, I was telling people that I was doing NFTs and, and like, I was almost embarrassed of it because they didn't know what it was. They were like, you know, what, you, 
like, what do you mean you're selling art on the internet? Like, is it real money? And it was just to the point where I was like, man, like, what do you mean? Just like go online or go on Google or something and look up <laughs> NFTs. What are you talking <laughs> So, you know, I, I was obviously, you know, um, I guess I'm pretty much saying like, you know, I, I was, I was the same way before, but yeah everybody was, you know, while, you know, it was going all over Twitter. Why don't, why don't these people just right click and save like, you know, so that's, that's kind of why I made this painting. You know, I feel like with the time I did make it, it was very, um, I guess very new and people kept, just kept saying, why don't, why don't people just save them? I'll, okay. I'll just save this. Like, okay, it's, you, not, you don't get, you don't get it. You don't get it. Yeah. So that's, that's why I made this. Yeah, this is like a good one too. This is like my After Effects uh, years. I think this is really cool, just the effects of everything and how it's moving. So on the note of like people not getting it, have you found that the people in your life, you know, when you're playing ball, your teammates, have they started to understand it a little bit more? Or do you feel like there's still a pretty big disconnect between people who, you know, love NFTs and are a big part of blockchain and everything and the people who aren't? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely, uh, sorry, I just got to plug in. There's definitely, no a um, the, the, the way I like to describe it to people when I talk to them about it now. Um, and like I, like I said, dude, I, I really don't talk about it now because I don't want to answer a thousand questions. You know, it's just like, well, what do you do for a living now? Like you retired? I just, yeah, I just say, yeah, I, I just paint. And they're like, oh, <laughs> well, are you a painter? Do you paint like inside houses? And I'm like, no, nah, dude, I'm, I like do art. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the way I explain it to them is just another medium, you know, like people paint with acrylics, people do sketches, people spray paint. And I just say, you know, NFTs are just digital art. There you go. Yeah. What you said at the beginning to or earlier was a big part of it as well as like getting started. Like it's the barrier to entry is, is very, very challenging. Yeah. Like, God forbid my parents tried to set up a MetaMask or buy something <laughs> off of OpenSea. Like yeah. I've bought a, a few small pieces for them uh, that I think that they would like, and I need to get them set up. And I think once they can have like a digital frame in their house where they could, I could show them how to put stuff up, right. they would get the art side of it a little bit more. For but sure. I still think we are many, a long time away from uh, mass adoption of NFTs. And I just think the people who are a part of it now, it's, it's a special time. Like, yeah, the NFT market is not great, whatever. But I think we'll look back on these as like the good old days of just sure. getting started with all this. And, and you know, everyone's trying to like find their niche in this. I think it's awesome that you're on the creative side. Like I'm not an artistic, creative person. But what I love to do is talk to people like yourself and like try to like hype, you know, fix, you know, spread the word on you, spread the word on other creators. Like I think that's really a fun, a fun part of this and why I've taken art more in the last you know, two years of my life than I did before was just getting to know the artists as well. Like I'm never going to, I can go look at a Van Gogh or a Picasso. But I'm never going to have been able to talk to them. Whereas right. I can right. see uh, a Matt Caesar piece and be like, Oh yeah, I, I had a chance to, to speak with him and learn about him. And there's just that deeper connection that you have, which is really important. Yeah. And that's, and that's what makes like, you know, like I said, the NFT New York, so, um, so valuable because you're able to meet these collectors and dude, like these people are spending thousands of dollars, you know, you're spending thousands of dollars on art. You know, it's, I'm grateful to meet those people because I want to talk to them and I want to, I want to see what they do. And, you know, a lot of them are anon, so they don't really tell you too much, but you know, at the end of the day, it's just being able to have a drink or, you know, have a beer or eat, eat dinner with these people and, you know, just kind of share conversations. And that's, I mean, that's all it's about, man. Just networking and, and, you know, making friends. I feel like I have more friends in the NFT space than I do in real life. <laughs> I feel that way too. So did you get a chance to meet a good number of your collectors at NFT NYC this year? Yeah. And um, I think in December is when I met a lot of them. And then I just kind of re-met them in, or, you know, reconnected with them in, what was it, June? Yeah. July? Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, it's, and and those are the guys I speak to on a daily basis. I mean, you can look at my my one on ones. I don't have too many of those sales just because you know I try and keep those more limited. 
but you know, pretty much every one of my one-on-one collectors I've met. So it's, it's pretty cool. That's really awesome. Any, any like particular stories from that stand out, like from meeting these people, was it December back at Art Basel in Miami that you met a lot of them for the first time? Uh, no, it was, um, it was before, before that. There okay. was an NFT NYC in New York. Uh, gotcha. In okay. January. That's, you know, I went to a dinner with a bunch of them and it was small. I think there was like 40 people, no phones, nothing. So it was cool. And then in June, it was, at, they ended up renting the whole place out. So it was much, much larger, but it's, it just, it stinks because everybody has so much to do in that four or five day span that, you know, the allotted four hours like is nowhere near enough to like have conversations with these guys, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure if you ever go there, um, you'll feel the same way. Yeah. I definitely need to make it out to NFT NYC next year. I'd like to get down to Miami this year for, uh, for art Basel. I think that'd be a really cool experience as well. Um, you know, I think that's everything on my end, as far as like your art, is there any final things you want to touch on, you know, on the art side of things? on uh you know your drop with nifty gateway anything like that uh not really man the drops on friday and you know half the proceeds go to be the match and um you know help and save lives like i said the partnership was super easy um i've been been sharing the story for 12 years so you know is whether there's a partnership or not i'm still going to push be the match and to join the registry um, so what we're doing is I think we're doing, uh, well, I don't think I know we're doing open edition on Friday and it, it's open for 48 hours, I believe. And then we will do another one, which is like a limited edition piece auction. Um, I think it might be like September 18th. I'll, I'll, I'll get on Twitter with you and let you know, cause I'm, yeah. I, I'm gonna probably post it and that'll be like another auction for 48 hours. And they just wanted to be able to keep it open Cause you know, as, as an artist, I'm like, well, dang, man, I don't want, I don't want that open for so long, but you know, they're they're They push it through all their socials. I mean, they, like I said, they have 30 million, you know, contacts that they can run all their stuff through and not all of them will open up the email at the same time. So for me to be able to like narrow that down to t like a 10 minute open editions, is pretty much impossible. So that's, that's the reasoning behind the 48 hours, which, you know, they were trying to keep it open for two weeks. I said, no way we're not doing that. <laughs> and, and luckily, you know, I, I love that, you know, Nifty is, you know, has the artist back and they said, you know, we won't do anything over 48 hours. So that was perfect. That's awesome. Well, hey, I hope that is very successful. I hope you're able to raise a lot of money for that great cause. Uh, the link to Matt's website for more information is going to be in the episode description, everybody. So check that out. Head over to Nifty Gateway. Grab one of those open editions. Do you know what the uh, price is going to be on those? Yeah, they're, they're cheap, man. They're 150 bucks. Okay, there you go. 150 bucks, 50% going to be the match to help people find bone marrow transplants. So that is a really great cause right there. So Matt, I really appreciate your time today, man. It was great talking to you. Uh, you know, we've interacted a bit on Twitter. It's always fun to to do this, you know, in person, as best in person as we can be. For sure. So thanks again for coming on. Once again, everybody, please head to Matt's website, head to his super rare page, check out all of his work. He's got some really great stuff over there. Uh, like today's episode, subscribe to the channel. So for Matt, for the rest of the team of Flolio, I'm Jeremy. Have a great day, everybody. We will see you next time.